everyone good afternoon welcome to my page on the Un Academy channel and uh, I would like to invite you today to a class that I'm taking on the listening test overview now this particular uh, class today is going to give you a complete idea about the listening test examination and also some strategies and tips all right before we begin let me tell you something about myself my name is Arifa Zahir and I'm the founder of British English Trainers. I have an experience of close to a decade in both teaching and training IELTS students and tutors. All right. And I've completed my CELTA from the Cambridge University. And not only have I taught IELTS, but I've also conducted IELTS all over East India uh, and uh, this has given me a perspective not only in regard uh, to what the students experience before the examination but also a complete perspective on what they experience on the day of the examination the total process not only in regard to the prep work but also in regard to the execution so from that idea, from that place of uh, you know, information, I have come to you with the listening test overview. So before we begin, my referral code is BE Trainers. Uh, if you uh, use this code on the Unacademy platform to subscribe to the you know, website, you will get a 10% discount. I repeat, just a second, let, let me get the pen there. I repeat, my referral code is BE Trainers. All right, it's right here. If you use, use this code, you get a 10% off. So now let's begin and let me tell you about the IELTS listening test examination. Now, the International English Language Testing System, that is the full form of the IELTS examination. So what is the purpose of giving the IELTS examination? The IELTS exam is given to either study or work abroad. All right. So it's either of the two reasons, either to study or to work abroad. IELTS is recognized by more than 2,000 uh, institutions in the USA, including all the Ivy League universities. Also, it's recognized in Australia, Canada, United, uh, United Kingdom, and all, almost all the European countries. So this is how much it is recognized. It is also taken um, by over a million candidates every year. Okay, so this is why ILTS is so important for everyone. Now, listening being one of the most important features of the ILTS uh, uh, examination. So we've got listening, reading, writing and speaking. So we need to understand that the listening examination is the first examination that you give when you uh, go, go to the examination hall to give your exam. Now, how is listening important? Listening is very important because you need to score marks you need to score a high band score in all the four skills of the ILTS examination in order to do well in IELTS now let's have a look and see if we've got any students in the class all right So, do we have anyone right now? Okay, fine. Now, let's begin. So, uh, let me tell you something um, about in regard to the ILTS test structure. It consists of four parts and 40 questions. Uh, 30 minutes uh, is the time that uh, is spent on doing the examination. The listening takes exactly 30 minutes. Uh, sometimes uh, a, a minute more, but not more than that. 10 minutes is taken to transfer uh, the answers from the question paper to the answer sheet because you need to understand that the answers are written only on the question paper and not on the answer sheet. Clear? Now, also the thing to remember is 
these 30 minutes that you get, uh, you are not supposed to even look at your answer sheet. And please use only pencils to give your examination. Next, you only listen once. Uh, there is no other opportunity for you to listen to the audio clip again. So it's very, very important that when the audio plays, uh, you listen to it very carefully and you are able uh, to focus on each and everything being said by the speaker in the audio. Now, the thing to remember also is that at the beginning of the listening examination, there is an audio that will play, uh, an example audio, and uh, that is mostly done to acclimatize you with the concept of the accent, uh, with the uh, varied accents that the speaker may be using. So it's a good, uh, you know, uh, it's very important at that moment to listen to it carefully and focus on what is being said in the audio rather than getting distracted and looking at the questions. You will get the time to look at the questions and it's very important to understand that the first 30 seconds that you get is actually a very good time for the test one's uh, first five questions of the listening examination. So you don't have to worry about devoting so much time to go through the questions in test one. Uh, there will come a stage between test three and test four when the 30 seconds required for checking the section three can be used for test four. All right, section four. Okay. There are a variety of different question types, which is very, very important, again, to understand. It's not only one question type which is repeated. Uh, so there will be an amalgamation of different kinds of questions, which can be both confusing, yet um, both confusing and interesting in the sense, uh, if you have practiced well, this stage is not going to be difficult at all for you. You will get 30 second breaks between each section. Now, like I said before, the IELTS listening test one has 10 questions. So you've got 10 questions. First five questions, 30 seconds break uh, to read. Then you get a 30 second break to look at the, uh, you know, check and look at the answers. Then you get another 30 seconds to look at the next set of questions. All right. And then another 30 seconds to check your answers. It's very, very important to note that uh, around this time, when you are looking at the questions um, and you are answering, you should be focusing only on those five questions and not get over excited and look at other questions. It's only when you move from section three to section four uh, that you have a problem in the sense that in the section four of the ILTS examination, there is no chance of you, in the section four of the ILTS examination, there is a no chance, absolutely no chance of you getting a 30 second break. So it's, uh, so it's important to, uh, it's important to focus on, uh, the, use that 30 seconds to focus on the questions, next set of questions, which will be displayed and uh, which will be already given, sorry. Look at those questions during that period and uh, not waste your time checking your answers there. I'll tell you why. Unlike the first 30 seconds, when you are looking at um, the questions, uh, the last 30 seconds don't hold much value because you cannot listen to the audio clip twice. And this, these 30 seconds are not for you to transfer your uh, uh, answers from the question paper to the answer sheet. So it's very important to understand right out there that you have to utilize your time effectively. Now, like I said, break one. So part one listening is a social or transactional dialogue between two speakers. You are listening to specific factual information and the possible scenarios may include booking conference facilities, finding out about specific courses, ordering things by telephone. It's very, very important to understand that uh, precision is very important out here because you are looking for specific details and 
that is something that should be clear right at the onset that whatever information is being said could be in numbers could be with uh, could be in regard to addresses could be also in regard to you know specific days specific time so these are the things that you ha would have to focus on in the part one of the listening test in the part two of the listening test you will get a talk or short speech on a topic of general interest you're listening for specific factual information possible topics may include talking about nature talking about different tourist attractions radio program about an exhibition part three listening is mostly a discussion between two and four people set in an educational context such as a tutorial or a seminar now the thing to notice out here is uh, part three listening is comparatively easier than part two because i'll tell you what in the part two of the listening test you are looking at also maps that means you are also doing listening uh, for marking on the maps marking different locations on the maps so the only way you are going to get good score in this part of the examination is by practicing signposting language which i've already covered in my earlier uh, you know videos in uh, my earlier classes the other thing that you will be focusing on is very clearly uh, looking at the map first and then looking at the question because this direction uh, activity is mostly focused on um, what is there in the picture only then you are supposed to correlate it with the questions because once you do that you look at how the entry is where are the different points you will be in a better position to answer the questions which should the speaker is going to ask in the audio clear so here you have to talk uh, like i said it talks about all these different aspects now part three listening you will get mcqs so though part two listening is uh, a little difficult in terms of both reading following and then answering part three's difficulty lies in reading as many questions as possible in the amount of time that is given to you now please note part three listening has mcqs so that means each question is going to have three to four uh, options for you now so most of the times it'll have mcqs and something else sometimes the complete list can be an mcq so be very careful practice part three properly here you're listening for inference also attitudes and opinions uh, possible scenarios may include discussion about a research project a talk and questions about a specific topic an interview with an expert on a topic so these are the different types of uh, you know topics that could be there as part of the part 3 listening now this is the place that i'm going to ask you to be very very careful the 30 seconds that you will be getting to check your answers for part 3 listening please use those 30 seconds to read the next set of questions for part 4 listening test now why because in part 4 there is not going to be any break so if uh there is no scene of a break in part 4 of the ielts listening test you have to understand that you will be reading 10 questions in 30 seconds so how to overcome this problem take 30 seconds use it to focus on the listening test uh, uh first five questions of the task for listening test part 4 listening test and the next 30 seconds which are going to be given to you focus on the remaining uh five questions of the part 4 now the thing to remember here is if the questions are fill in the blanks then it's going to be comparatively easy but if part 4 also consists of mcqs you will have to prepare yourself for reading a lot of material and the best way to do this is to focus on the keywords and correlate it to the question okay now what does part 4 consist of part 4 consists of discussion about a research project a talk and questions about a specific topic and interview with an expert on a topic now part 4 
Part 4 is a monologue in an academic style lecture or presentation. You are listening for main ideas, specific information, attitudes and opinions. Possible topics may include talks about scientific research, a lecture on environmental problems, a talk about how to develop in a specific career. There are a variety of question types. So now, what are the different question types that we get in the part four, uh, part one, part two, part three, and part four of the IELTS listening test? So let's have a look at that. Um, like I said, there are a variety of question types. You've got multiple choice, the scariest of them all. Uh, because if you do not practice MCQs, you are going to face trouble in regard to reading su such a lot of material in such a short span of time. So the best thing for you would be to watch, uh, you know, to focus on uh, doing a lot of MCQ practice, getting to know, acclimatizing yourself with the different kinds of multiple choice question types. Clear? Now, we also get sentence completion, labeling a diagram, map or plan. This is the place where you have to be careful. Um, mostly, uh, students get maps, but there is also, uh, you know, a lot of times you could get a plan or a diagram also. Matching. Uh, again, one of the common questions, not as difficult as multiple choice questions. Completion tasks, forms, notes, summary completion, etc. Clear? Now, the thing to remember out here is uh, if you are asked to give a one word answer, please remember to just give one word. Do not give, uh, you know, attachments before and after. Normally, my suggestion to students would be if a noun is present already there in the question, obviously. Uh, you wouldn't be using another noun even if you've heard, you know, if you've misheard something. There has to be an adjective or an adverb. So these are the things that you need to be careful of. The other thing that you would have to focus on is uh, definitely when it's a word and a number, please note it's already mentioned in the question, a word or a number or a word and a word or a number, two words and a number. Please be very, very careful. That is an option. That doesn't mean for every question you will have, you will be getting the same options. So these are the things that you need to be very careful of when you are looking at types of questions. Now, the listening band converter. To get in line, you'll have to get a 40. 838 to 39, 733 to 32, 517 to 24, 4, 10 to 16, 3, um, 3 we've got, 4 to 9, 2 we've got, 2 to 3, and 1 we've got as 1. All right? Now, uh, Obviously, there's no pass or fail marks in the ILTS listening test. We get only your uh, band scores. So what is the apt band score? What is a good band score? Completely depends on what your university or what the immigration authorities have asked for. So that's something that you need to be very careful of and then accordingly go for your ILTS examination. Common problems with IELTS listening test is panic, lack of concentration, the listening is too fast and can only listen once, misunderstanding the question and according to me, apart from all these things also is not following the instructions properly. So it's very important to follow the instructions properly and write your answer only in the question paper and do not even look at your answer sheet, all right? Now, also not able to identify answers from a mass of information, not familiar with the question types and not following instructions, example, number of words, number of answers to circle, just like I'd mentioned earlier, and only listening to keywords and neglecting to listen for meaning. Spellings, capitals, and grammar, 
spelling is is like uh, you know asking the examiner to deduct your marks by yourself spelling errors are a big no no in both list in all the three modules listening reading and writing apart from speaking because obviously the examiner is not going to ask you for your speaking uh, you know in your speaking for spellings but apart from that for all of these three skills spelling is a big no now next uh, let's have a look at the multiple choice question uh, option yes so we've got so these are the types of questions that you get so you've got uh, is that pen so look at how it comes so the question may be talking about how much is the dress and the 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 speaker in the audio may give you the right answer then give you a wrong answer and then again mislead you by giving some other answer so be very very careful and only concentrate on listening to the uh, only concentrate on listening and focusing on the specific answer so another one which is a very common one uh, this one is in options like this uh, in vertical form and this one is in the horizontal form all right so you've got the options and you just have to encircle them and keep uh, writing the answers in the question paper now the things to remember for mcqs are uh, the speaker may change his mind or correct himself all options may be mentioned the speaker may not use the same words as as, as in the possible answers positive and negative sentences example don't wear sandals so you know the question may have to uh, wear sandals and um, in the audio it may say don't wear sandals so that can be you know very misleading because you may in your not being able to concentrate properly you may just hear wear sandals and that can be misleading uh, think of different ways to say the following because that's what happens what they do especially in the latter part of the listening test is they use paraphrasing language so these are another uh, tips uh, other tips that you can use to better your uh, paraphrasing skills while listening so things like uh, 40% of citizens who live in amsterdam walk to work at least 3 times a week so think of other ways to, uh, in which the same thing can be said and realize that exactly what happens in the listening examination now these are short answer question types so no more than three words and or a number so what you need to do is uh it could be one word a one word answer it could be two words it could be three words and it could be three words and a number or a number so that doesn't mean that the each question type is all going to be exactly the same so you have to be careful here and exactly it again see this is what i'm trying to explain it would come with lots of long questions excuse me it could also come with short questions um, you know just um, mentioning it one after the other now the next one things to remember be careful with the word limit capital letters countries names etc changes of mind or self correction positive and negative sentences currency symbols distance measurements speed measurements am or pm etc now the next one is sentence summary completion questions uh again this is similar to the earlier one that we've done the difference is here you have to write uh, in isolation in uh, you know just answer here it is a part of the question so you have to be careful out here listen look at the question properly underline the keywords and listen specifically to what is being said now things to remember word limits answer must be grammatically correct so article tenses spellings etc spelling must be accurate it is sometimes possible to predict the answers have a look at a question like this right okay now next labeling a diagram plan or map candidates have to label a diagram plan or map or chart 
the answers are usually chosen from a list on the question paper it could be a diagram it could be a plan it could be a map it could be a chart things to remember here too organization or layout north south east and west on a map look for probable starting point of description example entrance on a floor plan of a building understanding of charts and graphs now here what does the tourists tourists say about each hotel choose your answers from the box and write the correct letter a to h next to questions 1 to 4 so you choose from here and write choose your correct answers from the box and write the correct letter e to h next to questions 1 to 4 so if you need to write only four options that will be mentioned in the question if you need to write uh, you know if each question uh, is a uh, you know you are allowed to write as many options even that will be mentioned in the question things to remember here the answers may be mentioned in a list different order than they are listed be careful of negative sentences and be careful of precise meanings also clear now have a look at the classification tasks which person states the following these are the options and you have to, you've got another set of options below the thing to remember out here is you can use each answer more than once so this is the one which is different from the earlier one the answers will generally come from one of the speakers lots of extra information may be given within the talk clear hints and tips read questions and answers carefully underline keywords prediction be aware of synonyms and paraphrasing the speaker may change his mind or correct himself now the next thing if the speaker spells or repeats a word phrase or number that may well be the correct answer if you miss an answer don't panic move on now think of synonyms for multiple choice answers look at questions and completed answer sheet say which answers would not get a point and why spellings capitals word limit etc regular short listening practice test 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 and test do's listen to the introduction it sets the context and focuses the mind use the breaks to look ahead at the section use prediction skills this helps students to focus on the type of answer needed listen carefully to the instructions how many answers do you circle word limit etc write while listening write clearly on the answer sheet check spellings and grammar carefully don't write more than with the word limit leave any space on the answer sheet blank panic if one answer is missed focus on the listening passage that's coming next don't look too far ahead all right and so this is what is a complete uh, overview about the ielts listening test it is very very important to understand that the ielts listening test um is mostly uh, about not only your ability to understand english but it is also about your ability to focus on uh, being calm being collected and listening to what is being said so it is actually not only an english proficiency test but it is an also it is also a test of your ability to withstand pressure withstand a different environment all right i would like to end my session there today before i end my session let me tell you about the course that i'm going to start from the 19th of december uh, this course is going to be a capsule course on reading my referral code is be trainers if you register with this code you will get a 10% discount so let me share with you what we are going to do in this course so i'm going to cover the complete reading format overview teach you skimming and scanning also do strategies and tips in regard to matching the headings matching the paragraph uh, yes no not given true false not given multiple choice questions summary completion table completion sentence completion classification flow chart short answer questions and a complete uh, tips and strategies and the end of it also remember we are going to have a doubt class twice during this which is going to help you uh, come up with questions in regard to problems if you would have during the course and uh, 
in understanding certain question types also we would be discussing each and every skill each and every subtype question in detail so what are you waiting for i would request you to use my subscription code and subscribe to the unacademy channel uh, unacademy platform so that you have access to innumerable live uh, classes uh, by the best educators of the country also remember that there are different types of subscriptions one month three months six months and a year subscription and depending on which you one you take you will get different types of discounts and offers all right thank you for attending my class i look forward to seeing you in the course so please don't forget 19 december onwards at 8 pm